question number 17. We are looking at this, the graph. They're giving us a graph here. The graph below shows some kind of transformation of y equals 2 to the x. They tell us, they say write the equation in the form of this right here, y equals a times 2 to the x plus k for the graph above. You can see the answer down here. How did they, how did they get to that answer? Well, let's start with y. They're telling us it's of the form y equals a times 2 to the x plus k. Okay, and so um, I bet you can figure out what we're going to do. We're going to basically look at these points. Let's start with the, the or actually probably the x-intercept. It doesn't really matter. I'll just start with the x-intercept there. So if I start with that x-intercept, that's the point over 1, up 0. x is 1, y is 0. So I'm going to plug in. Plug in 1, 0. X is 1. Y is 0. So then we get 0 equals A times 2 to the 1 plus K. So that means 0 is 2A. 2 to the 1 is just 2 plus K. So that's um, one equation. One thing I'm forgetting, I just remembered that when you have um, an exponential graph, this is one thing you need to remember, when you have an exponential equation, this is what you should put on your um, 3 by 5 card for the exam, this right here is the horizontal asymptote. The number added or subtracted off to the right for an exponential function, this is exponential, right? Because x is up in the power zone, the exponent known. This is an exponential function. So if you have an exponential function, remember, exponential functions always rocket on one side. So here's where it's rocketing down. Flatten on the other side. That's what exponential functions always do. And where they flatten, their horizontal asymptote, is the number off to the right. So, so where is this one flattening? Where's the horizontal asymptote? Clearly at 4. It's leveling off, flattening out at a height of 4. So y is 4, so that means the k must be 4. So that means this k is 4, so we have 0 is 2a plus 4. Now we can solve that equation for a. Subtract 4 from both sides, so 2a must equal negative 4. Last step, divide by 2. Boom, a must be negative 2. So our equation, y equals a, bring it up to here, a times 2 to the x plus k. We now know the a, right here, the a is negative 2 times 2 to the x, and the k is 4, because again, the number added or subtracted off to the right, that's the horizontal asymptote. That's the, the line at which it flattens out. So there's our formula. That's the same, I'll say, or you could put the y in the front. You know that's the same thing, huh? It's good either way. Both things are the same. That's a positive 4 in the front or a positive 4 in the back. Whatever, same thing. All the signs are the front. Remember, order doesn't matter. Signs in front matter. So this, th those two have all the same signs in the front. They are the same. So that's a good one. All right, let's move on to number 18. We're supposed to solve this equation for B there. Now, um, how does it work? When you have an, a logarithmic equation and you want to change to exponential, how do you change between the two forms? Remember, it's like saying one or uno. I'm going to try to say the same number in a different language. I'm going to try to say the same thing as this expression, but I want to say it in exponential language instead of log language. So right here it's being said in log language. Let's change it to exponential language. How do you do that? Well, when you, when you gain or lose the log, the 
base stays the base, the other two switch. So as I'm going to cross out the log word, and whenever you when you gain a, when you put on a new log word or lose a log word, I'm losing a log word in this case. When you do that, the base stays the base. So this three will continue to be the base, and then it goes to this power equals that they switch those two switch. So instead, so it goes three to the minus five power is b. Did you follow that path? Start with the base. Go here to the minus five power equals b. Um, now, you can, um, what, what do negative powers do? Remember what we learned about negative powers? They're negative. They're unhappy. They're unhappy at their job. What does somebody unhappy at their job do? They jump to a new job. Same thing here. This one's going to jump to the bottom of the fraction. It jumps to the other side of the fraction. It's negative where it was at. It was unhappy where it's at. And after it jumps, it's happy. Now it's plus five power now that it's on the bottom. And in the end, they want you to hit the buttons on your calculator to get a decimal it looks like so there's the decimal you'll get when you hit the buttons on the calculator let's try another one down here um, same kind of thing cross out the log when you lose the log word or gain the base stays the base the other two switch so it becomes x to the third is 125 no more log word when you cross out the log word the base stays the base the other two switch now how do you how do you solve that for x well, you raise both sides to the one-third power. One-third is the opposite of three. It just makes it normal x. Take your calculator. Take 125 to the power of one divided by three. Hit equals, and you'll get five. You see, because five is the number times itself three times. You know, five to the third power will equal 125. You might have already known that and guessed it. Five times five is 25, and five quarters, five times 25. Five quarters is a dollar twenty-five. Yep, x is five there. So there we go on that one. Number twenty. Rewrite each of the following expressions. So three to the fourth equals eight. Rewrite it as a log. So here we go again. When you gain or lose the log word, the base stays the base, the base stays the base, the other two switch, the base stays the base, the other two switch. So I'm going to put on a log, see that now I'm gaining a log word, a minute ago we were losing a log word, now I'm putting on a log word that wasn't already there, right, here was the original expression, this was an exponential expression, wasn't it, this is this right here, is a power expression. 3 to the 4th power equals 81. This is exponential. But I want to change it to logarithmic. So we're changing between those two languages, between logarithmic and exponential. When you change between those two languages, what's the rule? The base stays the base, the other two switch. So you grab this base, you go, that's the base with an 81 equals 4. Go round the horn there. Did you track with that movement? 3... 81, 4. So log base 3, 81 equals 4. So the base stays the base. See how this base 3, he was a base, meaning he has something on him. He has a power on him. He's a base. That's what a base means. He's got a power on him. This base stays the base. He's still the base. 2 to the 81 equals 4. All right, now, same thing down here, but opposite. Now we're starting with the log. This is a log expression, and they want us to change it to exponential. What do you do? Same thing. Base stays the base. Other two switch. Okay, well, I don't see a base. What's the base? Yeah, what is the base? When a log, when a log, whoops, skipping some, oh, letters there. When the log has invisible base, right? It's there's no there's no low down number there. A log, see how like this is this base is three. <clears throat> Next to the G, 
there's next to the next to the G there's always supposed to be a low down number called a base. There's supposed to be a low down base number there. So what is the low down base number when it's invisible? Ten, right? When a log has a visible base, it is ten. So it's ten, so that's log base ten. Okay, so how does this work then? This means you grab the ten, remember? The base stays the base, he'll still be the base. No, crossing out the log word, no more log word. We're losing, this time we're losing the log word. Ten to the minus four equals that. Ten to the minus four is point oh 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 one. You don't need that zero in the front, it, it doesn't do anything. There we go. So that's how we change between log form and exponential form. 21. So on this one, we're to graph this by hand. So you must clearly graph or list two points on the graph. So what are we going to do? Well, let's just start by making an XY table. What should we plug in here at first? Remember, you want to plug in what will make that zero. Because remember, if you make what x value, x equals 2, makes the inside of the log equal 0, doesn't it? If you plug in x equals 2, and that's important to start there. So you plug in two. So step so step one, you plug in what makes the inside of the log zero. And you get y. You get y equals log base three of two minus two plus four. Y equals log base three of zero plus four. Now remember how we do um, <clears throat> logs with a funny base. We make them two logs. Do you remember that? That's, that's an important rule. <clears throat> Let me write it up here. So the log base B of A, you can always, you put the base one on the bottom, right? The base goes to the bottom, and the other one on the top. So you make, you make two logs. See, if you have one log with a funny base, ba you know, um, what I mean by funny base, if they just give you log base 10 of whatever, 7 or whatever, you can do that directly on your calculator because, you, know, you know, that log base 10 is the invisible one, right? The 10 is invisible. You just hit log 7 on your calculator. You got the number. No problem. But if they give you something like, a, I don't know, log base 4, you don't have a log base 4 button. That's not the invisible 10. So how are you going to do some weird base that's not the invisible 10? Well, you're going to make it into two logs. The base one goes to the bottom. The other one goes to the top. Now, those are two invisible base 10 logs, right? We call that the change of base formula. These are both invisible base, invisible base. Hit the buttons on your calculator, and you can get the answer. That's how you do weird bases that are not the invisible base 10. So that's what we're doing here. <clears throat> this log, which is a weird base of 3, we don't have a log base 3 button on our calculator, we make it into two logs, and the base one goes to the bottom, notice. Hit the buttons on your calculator. As soon as you do this part, you're going to get air. You won't even be able to add the four. This log base zero part right here will give you an air on your calculator. So what does that mean? <clears throat> That's the vertical asymptote. It's at two. So right here at x equals two, that's the vertical asymptote. That's why it's telling you air it's saying you can't go there. Remember, you can't touch vertical asymptotes. Those are guidelines. Those are, that's a line of approach. You'll get closer. The graph will be guided closer and closer to that line, but you cannot actually touch it. All right, now what do we do from there? We add one. So we add one. We go up by one. This is how we do log graphs, and you plug that in. Y equals log base 3 of 4. Oops, sorry, 3. 3 minus 2 plus 4. And what's that? Log base 3 of 1 plus 4. Okay, now what do we do with that log? You make it in, right? It's a weird log. We don't have a log base 3 button on our calculator. All we have is 
log with the invisible base, which is 10. We can't do log base 3, at least not directly. What do we do? We make it into two logs. The base goes to the bottom. Hit the buttons on your calculator. Okay, so do we, do we see what happened there? So um, when you change this log, whoops, I just erased it. Didn't mean to do that log base 3 of 0 when you change this into two logs so that the base goes to the bottom the log base 3 goes to the bottom and the 0 stays on the top what you'll get is error in fact as soon as you do this log 0 part you will get an error and so what does that error mean that means vertical asymptote let me go back over here so that means vertical asymptote so that's what I did is I put the vertical asymptote right there at 2 on the graph. That means that's a guideline. That's a line of approach. It's a line of approach for the graph. Okay, so now we go on to the next step. And what do we do? We just add 1. So, so we always start by what makes the inside of the log 0. And that would be x equals 2. And that's always where your vertical asymptote is going to be. So next we go up by 1. So go up to 3. Plug in y equals log base 3 of 3 minus 2 plus 4. <clears throat> and so that's log base 3 of 1 plus 4. <clears throat> okay. And so... That now, how do we handle log base three of one? We don't have we don't have a log base three button, do we? On our calculator, we only have the invisible log base ten button. So what do you do? You make it into two logs, and the base goes to the bottom. So the log of three goes on the bottom. It's the base, and this part will just be zero. Zero plus four will be four. So we get 4 there. So that means there's the point over 3, up 4. That must be one of the points the log goes through. Okay, now we need one more point because they asked us to get you know two points on the log graph. So we need one more. So what are we going to do? Well, we could come up here. We could just go up by 1 again, see if that works. Go to 4. It's not going to work very nice, but I'll show you. So log base 3, if you plug in 4, 4 minus 2 plus 4, that's going to be log base 3 of 2 plus 4. Now if you hit the, you have to change that into two logs again, right? The base goes to the bottom, the other one's on the top. You're going to get some weird decimal here. I'll get it on my calculator as well. <clears throat> I'm getting 4.6. It, it goes further and further, but good enough. Four point, now, we can't do that on our, on our graph. 4 over 4.6, I don't know. It's about, you know, it's about right there. It's not an exact dot that we can find that's right on a crossing of two lines. So we need another point. We need another. So go up one more. We need to get one that's whole numbers. So let's go up to 5 now. <clears throat> Come on down here. <clears throat> so plug in. So this is log base 3 of 5 minus 2 plus 4. So that's log base 3 of 3 plus 4. So remember what that does. You make it into two logs because we don't have a base 3 button on our calculator. So make it two invisible base 10 logs plus 4. Well, this is clearly 1. Right? Same thing over itself. 1 plus 4, 5. I don't even need a calculator. That's 5, 5, which is right here. There's 5, 5. So there it is. As soon as you click on, your, on what you need to do with the graph making tool is you just click on the 2. It'll make the vertical asymptote. Then you click here at 3, 4. And then you click here at 5, 5. And it'll, it'll automatically put in... The log graph. The log graph goes down forever, getting closer and closer to that vertical asymptote line and up to the right forever. Logs always take a dive on one side and they go up slowly on the other, up or down slowly on the other. Okay, so now they will ask us a few 
follow-up questions on this one. They will ask us for the domain. So I can do them over here. So what's the domain of this function? The domain, remember domain, is always how far left, how far right, left edge, right edge. So what's the left edge? How far left does it go? Well, it gets really close to 2. But it doesn't quite touch it, right? You never touch that vertical dotted line, the vertical asymptote. So I'll put parenthesis 2. And it goes right, right? It goes from 2 over here at 2 to infinity. I'll just say from 2 to infinity. There's the domain. 2 to infinity. All right, now the range. <clears throat> range is the up and the down. So... How, far, how low does it go? How high does it go? What's the bottom of the graph? What's the top of the graph? So how low does it go? Well, it goes down forever. Down to negative infinity. It goes down, down. How high does it go? It's going to go up forever also. It doesn't do it very fast, but it does go up forever. From negative infinity to positive infinity. Bottom, comma, top. That's the range. The asymptote, they're going to ask you for the asymptote. What's the asymptote? What's well, right here at x equals 2. It's x because it hits the x-axis at 2. It goes through the x-axis at 2. That's the vertical asymptote. And so that's everything they wanted. There we go. <clears throat> okay, number 22. So this one they want me, it's another log graph. They want me to graph this log equation, and they're giving me multiple choice. One, two, three, four. Which of those is the right log graph? Well, so where do we start? We start. The important thing is to know where to start. Start with x equals a number to make the inside of the log zero. Right? What could you plug in here for x to make this inside of the log zero? Well, one. Positive 1, right. So that's where you start in your table. Positive 1. And when you plug that in, you'll get y equals log base 5 of 1 minus 1. And what's that? Well, that's log base 5 of 0. And you know what we do? We turn it into two logs. The, the base goes to the bottom, the other one on the top. When you hit that in your calculator, it'll give you error because you can't have 0 in a log or negative. You can't have 0 or negative in a log. It'll give you error, which means that's where the vertical asymptote is. That's what, we, that's what the error means. The vertical asymptote is there because you don't touch a vertical asymptote. It can't give you a point. That's why it gives you error because you can't touch a vertical asymptote. So we know the... The true log graph, this, this graph, this log graph, has a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. So this one has a vertical asymptote at 1. This one has a vertical asymptote at 1, right? You can see it because the graph is being guided there. Not this one. This one's at negative 1. This one's no. And this one is also at negative 1, no. So those two are out already, so it's one of the top two. How do we figure out which one? Well, then we just, next step, we just go up by 1. So that'll be to 2. Now let's plug that in. <clears throat> y equals log base 5 of 2 minus 1. So that's log base 5 of 1. You know what we do? We turn it into two logs. The base goes to the bottom. And that'll be 0. So over 2, up 0. Yeah, that has the point over 2 up 0, but so does that. All right, they both have it. They're both good so far. Okay, so where do we go from there now? Well, we can go up by one more. Just keep going up by one. Come up here and try that one. <clears throat> Plug in 3. y equals log base 5 of 3 minus 1. y equals log base 5 of 2. And remember, you turn it into two logs, the base goes to the bottom, the other one goes on the top. This is going to be some weird decimal, but it'll still help us. So let's get it. Log 2 divided by log 5. I'm doing it on my calculator right now. I'm getting point, point 0.43. I'll just say point 0.4. That's about as accurate as I can graph anyway. So over 3, up point 0.4. Now, I know that's not a clean point. 
but it's good enough for us to be able to tell which graph is right. So which one has the point that looks about right over 3 up 0.4? Let's try it out. Here's, here's this one. Over 3, no, that one's down. That's over 3 down some amount. That's not right. Over, this one's right. See, this one's over 3. Yeah, that looks like up 0.4. It looks just under half up. This is the right graph. This must be the right one. See how we found that? Multiple choice, we can do it. All right. Let's try number 23. Same kind of thing. You start, how do you, do you want to put on your three by five card? How you start a log graph. So how do we start? Start by x equals a number to make, this is how you always start a log graph. You start a log graph by x equals a number to make the inside of the log Zero. So what can you plug in there? Well, just straight zero. The inside's just x, so just plug in zero. So we'll make an xy chart. Just plug in straight zero. What do we get? y equals log base 6 of 0 minus 4. And what do we do? The The... We got to turn it into two logs. The base goes to the bottom, the other one on the top. And if you do that, right away, this part won't even let you get further. It'll right away say error because you can't put zero or negative into a log. Well, that means that's where the vertical asymptote is. That always tells you the vertical asymptote, doesn't it? The vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote must be at zero. Well, this one has a vertical right on zero. You can see the graph being guided there. So does this one has a vertical right on zero. This one, no, no, no. His vertical's way over here. <clears throat> it's a no. This one's vertical's way over there. It's a no. So again, it's one of those top two. It's one of those top two. What do we do now? Well, now we just go up by one. Let's plug in one. See what we get. Why? So we start with the number to make the inside zero, then we just go up by one. Y equals log base six of one minus four. So remember how this work, works. The base goes to the bottom, the other one on the top. Hit the buttons on your calculator. This part will be zero, so it'll come out minus four. Over one, down four. So over one, down four. Yeah, that's right. And over one, down four. Yeah, both of those two are still in the running. They are so far so good. All right, so we got to go up one more. Got to do one more point. Plug in two. Maybe I can do it down here. So let's try it. So if you plug in two, y equals log base six of two minus four. You know what we do? We make that into two logs. The base goes to the bottom. The other one on the top. Hit the buttons on your calculator. You get some weird decimal there. I'll do it on my calculator. Log of 2 divided by log of 6. And subtract 4. I'm getting negative 3.61. I'll just say negative 3.6. Good enough. So which one of those looks right? Which one of those can do that? So over 2, let me erase this, get this out of the way. Over 2, down 3 points. Over 2, down 3 points. No, this one is down, this is over 2, down 4 point something, isn't it? See, it's below 4? No. This one is over 2, down, yeah, that looks right, doesn't it? Over 2, down 3.6, that, that looks correct. Yes, there's our answer. This is the right graph. We got it. So there it is. So we just start by what makes the inside of the log zero, and then we just go up one at a time from there. Okay, so number 24. Write the expression as a single log. So now they want us to use log properties 
to uh, combine things here. Remember those log properties? We had three log properties, so like number one, <clears throat> log base b of x plus log base b of y is log base b of x times y. Remember that? And then number two, log base b of x minus log base b of y subtraction between two logs becomes dividing and the third one log base b of x to a power that power drops down to the front to multiply so there were the three log properties and notice the this side is always two logs easy meaning there's adding and subtracting easy operation adding subtracting Whereas this side is specifically these two. That's what I mean. Not that third property. Um, this, this one over here, this is one log harder, meaning it's times and it's divide. See, times and divide. Multiplying and dividing is a harder operation. So it's a harder job for one log, meaning multiplying or dividing, a harder operation. And it's an easier operation, just adding or subtracting for two logs. That's like, you know, a job is easier for two people, harder for one person. If that helps you remember it. Put that on your 3 by 5 card for the test. Okay, so what do you do with numbers in the front? Numbers in the front can go back to the power. See how that's back in the power? Either way, you can just jump between the front and the power anytime you want. So they want us to jump this back to the power, jump this back to the power, jump this back to the power. The fact that these are natural log instead of regular log doesn't matter. Exactly the same rules apply. So it's going to be natural log of x to the 17 plus natural log of w to the 5th minus natural log of z to the 5th. Now we got to make all those, they said single log. They want me to make it into one log, so that's going to be natural log. Remember the adding becomes times and the subtraction becomes divide. And you got to put parentheses around this. There we go. As they say right there, there's our answer using those properties. Okay. Let's try 25. So 25, they basically want me to go the other way. So this time they're starting with one log and they want me to make it a sum or difference of logarithms, several logs. See how the answer is lots of logs? So we're going the other way. So this problem here in 24, we went from three logs to one log, and 25 is the other way, one log to three logs <clears throat> in the end. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, uh, the base is not going to change. So log base 5, they're all going to be log base 5. Basically, the numbers on the top are multiplied. The one on the bottom is divided. You know the properties. Um, multiplying becomes adding for two logs. Dividing becomes subtraction for two logs. So this will be log. Let me just write right here on the line. Log base 5. They're all going to be log base 5. We don't change the base. We never change the base. Log base 5, y to the 6th, plus log base 5, x to the 10th, minus log base 5 of that weird root thing, root, square root of z plus 12. Okay, we get so far, so that makes sense. We're not done yet. Now, um, what is a root? What's, what's up with this root? Well, you have to remember the principle that a root is a fractional power. Remember that? Here's the rule. If you have anything to the A divided by B power, that B <clears throat> can swing around and go into the hook like that. So whenever you have a fractional power, it's a root. You can, you can switch from denominator to index. This this spot here is called the index of the root. So you can be in the index or you can be in the denominator, right? Denominator here, same thing. Denominator or index 
for a root, it's the same thing. Fractional powers are roots. They're like saying one or uno. You're saying the same number in two different languages again. So here we are, fractional power language, square root language. There are two ways of saying the same thing. So we've got to change this to be minus log base 5. The square root, um, we're going to make it z plus 12 to the half power. That's the same thing. Why? How do you know? Where'd the one come from first off? Well, there's always an invisible one power right there. If you don't see any power, right, it's an invisible one power. Anything to the first power, that doesn't change it. So that was invisibly there all along. And then this two just swung back to the denominator, right? You can change from denominator to index or back and forth, depending on what you want to do. Okay, so we changed it from a root to a fractional power. Why do we care about that? Well, because now we can do log property 3, right? For logs, powers on something can drop down and be in the front and be multiplied in the front. So I grab this power, 6, drop it down. That's why they get this. I grab that 10 power, drop it down. That's how they get that. And then I grab that half power. Now that we've changed from root form to fractional power form, I got a power I can drop it to the front of the log. That's how they got that. There's our final answer on that one. Okay, so last one, number 26. So how do we do this one? So it's again, we're starting with one log, and they want me to break it into lots of logs, right? Summer difference of logarithms. So we're going from one log to many logs. So how do we do it? Well, we got this root thing again. Here it is. Uh, third root. What did we just talk about? This third root is there's an invisible one power, right? When there's no power on the whole thing, it's invisible one power. That's going to swing back and become a one-third. That's not a log property. That's just what's true of fractional powers always. So that'll become log, and then this will be x to the 10th, z to the 17th, over y to the 14th, all to the one-third power. You can always change, like this says right up here, Right up here, you can always change between fractional powers and roots anytime you want to. So I just changed form. We had a root here, and I swung that 3 back around to the denominator to be a one-third power. Okay, so what? Well, now, property 3 here, whoop, property 3 right here, says whenever you have a power... You can bring it down to the front, multiply it down to the front. So I'm going to take, now that we've changed from root form to fractional power form, I can drop that fractional power to the front. So it'll be one-third log of all this stuff, x to the 10th, z to the 17th, over y to the 14th. <clears throat> and now we can uh, keep that one-third in the front of everything. And now we can break this into three logs. In fact, there it is right there. See how that one-third is in the front with the parentheses? Let me just leave it. They've done it. See the one-third's there in the front. See this parenthesis here and parenthesis here? That's in addition to any parentheses you have on logs. And so we just do like that, right? I could, I could do it more slowly, maybe, if that's helpful to you. It'd be log of x to the 10th plus log of z to the 17th minus log of y to the 14th, right? Because, you know, the multiplying on the top becomes adding and the dividing on the bottom becomes subtraction. And then you just take each of those powers and drop them right down to the front of each of those logs, which is what they have done right there. There we go.